Welcome to an episode of Someday is Today. It's been forever. It's been a long time. Shouldn't we shouldn't have left, left you. you. <laughs> but we came back with a present. Welcome present? to our latest family member. This is Journey. Please, I, don't, I still don't Journey. like the kisses yet. But it's come we got a to join us on our journey. Yeah. Oh, you know what? That's a good point. Journey is here for the journey. Oh, okay. Um, so, yes, wanted to do a little quick introduction of our baby girl journey. We got journey. Um, maybe you gotta move closer. We got journey. Closer. What do you mean? Um, oh, is this good for you? Yeah, this is good. Got we got it. journey two, three weeks ago. Sure. She is our little 10, ten weeks old. Um, what is she? Labrador? Yeah. Mix. Lab mix. Lab mix of some sort. Um, mm-hmm. But we got her because um, our daughter, Nubia, had been wanting um, a dog for some time. So we finally pulled the trigger. And to be honest, I was the one who was really holding out. I did not think... Um, I could deal with a dog, but the funny thing is, I love her. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not doing a lot of the heavy lifting, but um, but yeah. that was my my biggest thing from the the, the first time they asked about a dog. Uh, who's gonna be doing all the poop? I mean, the walking on that. It's not seven. gonna be me. So, mm. and so they assured us they would do it, but um, Nubia has probably been a little overwhelmed over the past couple of days. But she's doing it. <laughs> They're all doing it. But um, but yeah. So welcome everyone to another episode of Some Days Today, where we encourage you all to live your life like it's a vacation. Mm, I, yes. I don't remember. I don't know if that's really still our thing, but um, definitely that ass do epic dope, dope ass, ass shit. shit. Yes. Even though, like we said, there is another couple using that ass, so we need to. It's not the same dead ass. It's but, not the same. No, we're but, good. You know, we're good. We're good. Now, <laughs> um, it's been a while. It's been a while. Let's just be honest. Where have we been? We have been out and about trying to live and manifest and do. And goddamn, that's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Trying to do, trying to live your life like it's a fucking vacation is not a vacation. Mm, it's yeah. a lot of work. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> trying to live your life like it's a vacation is not a vacation no no I, so that's it's, what i'm it's, saying it's i don't work. think that's what it is that we're doing I don't okay think we're living our lives like it's a vacation all i know is i am tired and i've said that before i remain fired up and my apologies for not doing an input or an episode for over a month i don't i can't explain it i can't explain it in the past month i know some things have happened. I mean, I did travel to Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that was... You've been probably, living a vacation, I guess. I've Maybe been, too I've been much living, of a vacation. I've been living a bit. I'm actually getting Maybe. ready to travel again <laughs> tomorrow. Um, <laughs> so I'm being influenced by some circumstances. But mm. um, um, but yeah, so it's it's been good. But needless to say, I think it's important to sort of refocus and get back to the priorities and um yeah that's why we've decided we needed to do an episode today i do think it would be important to actually do a recap of what we've been up to because there's been some interesting developments and even if we can't talk about everything um full-fledged i I do think we've had some interesting progress especially as we're trying to move the needle on what we are trying to do but overall God is good. Yeah, still taking cold ass showers. Um, still, I can't say the thing. Yeah, um, <laughs> still, still going to the gym. Matter of fact, um, I, I just ent- so it's springtime is coming, so I'm just entering my cut phase. Mm. So there's bulk, build the muscle and all that. Build the no, weight. build the weight. Yeah, build the fat. The weight with the muscle. Oh, okay. You know, the point of the bulk is that you're also building muscle. And now when you cut, you're trying to cut the fat as opposed and still keep on the muscle. So mm-hmm. you got the muscle and then the fat, like all around the muscle, you try to trim that out. Gotcha. So, yeah. I don't think I introduced myself. Do you need to? My name is Bola. You're, no, <laughs> you're, you're like, 
You need no introduction. True. Matter of fact, you, you you should probably just start saying Bola and not uh, Bola, like the one name. The person. Bola. No, it's like Madonna or so Prince, and, and you need a different name. <laughs> so many Me, bolas. I mean, I'm, like, I'm just going to be bolas? Mackins. No, Mackins, that's good. That that's is unique. Uh, unique. Ain't nobody else um, called Mackins. It was some dude that was speaking to at work who was like, "Wow, Mackins Ardina, you should definitely um, figure out how to put that in some kind of brand." <laughs> I was like, oh. "Okay, I mean." Listen, let's do you know it. I'm married, right? <laughs> what does that mean? It's like kicking game to me or something. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't know. No, 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 no. But so I'm just wait, saying, that like, is actually other dudes really don't say that. that like, is... women could go and be like giving each other these, these types of compliments, but other dudes don't say that to each other. But yeah. So that's just... fascinating. Do you feel like you've ever been in a situation where a man is trying to pick you up? Pick me up is a very. Or, no, or not kick, kick game. me up. Not kick even game. kick game. Um, I've been in two situations where, you know, I mean, uh, you know, you in New York, like it was like um, this one time where this guy was just like basically doing what guys do to women mm. one time. Whistle? Was like, ooh. Oh. Yeah, that was like, just pretend I didn't hear that and keep it moving. <laughs> and, then, uh, <laughs> and then one time I was in India. And this is oh. when I had my dreads. I, I I told this story multiple times, and um, you know, but I had dreads, but then I also had like I a freaking is. beard. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like you're e- you either know I'm a dude or you like women with uh, beards. With beards, this is uh, weird. And, and he's saying? over there, like basically touching. Like I was at an outdoor concert, and he's like grabbing at my joint. I was like, oh, what the. But this is, you know, because I, I, it was, I was young, too. all up on you. Yeah, like, he was grabbing. I was like, the uh, junk. Yeah, this is um, something. I don't even remember at this point, but definitely it was like kind of a grab at the junk type of thing. And um, I remember thinking to myself so before you that because I was you young. You didn't decide to punch him no. or? First of all, I'm in a different country and I realized them Indians get busy. Oh, um, in terms when of I went, Yeah, they're violent. <laughs> You can, like when I went down there, um, I stepped off of, because this was, oh, look at that. So I started see, and when I stepped off of the boat, and one of the first things I saw was somebody getting his ass whooped. <laughs> but, wow. So, um, but yeah, but uh, anyway, like, but that wasn't the reason. So you didn't want none of it? No, that, okay. wasn't, that wasn't the reason. I, like truthfully, because I was young, I was thinking to myself, whenever I, um, I talked about that, somebody do that, I'm probably going to smash him, but then. When it happened, it was more like, yo, I, you know, it was it wasn't as um, you know, offensive as I thought it would be. Like it was just like, yo, what the hell? You chill. Like I don't, I don't go down like that. So he said, he said chill. I was like, no, so, not yeah. here. I, I like I like me a warm hole, <laughs> not <laughs> what would be that? Not not a pole. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna um, stop right there. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. So no like pole, warm hole. Dude, I Is mean, that a thing? can you really uh, say this type of stuff? Now they, um, you can, we can get flagged on YouTube for. Oh, is that like too that. much? You better get yourself. You get yourself. But to be honest, though, there are you could eat. You could still offer a warm hole. Dude, I ain't got <laughs> time for this bowl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. Too much. It's a little too much. Yeah, okay, uh, yeah. keep it moving. All right, so. Welcome to Sundays Today, where we encourage you to live your life. I feel like there's a glare. I feel like there's stuff going on yeah, the, well, the thing. It's the thing. Um, where we encourage you to live your life. Just live it, men. Live it. What are we talking about today? Really? <laughs> you really don't ask me? Like, you're... <laughs> what are we talking about? You really... Okay, so I know what we talked about talking about. Have you... How, this hasn't been that much alcohol, so I don't even understand what's happening right now. Because you're acting like that's... that's Ain't no alcohol. Want. Okay, so what we're going to talk about. We're not going to talk about Tenet. And we're going to talk about what I took away from it. Because, well, not what I took away from it. What was inspired in me as a result of watching the movie. Not the movie itself. Because it's way too complicated to try to <laughs> talk about. And quite frankly, I need to watch it another two, three times mm-hmm. before I can do that. So, um, yes. However, we're going to talk about um, a movie. I mean, uh, we're going to talk about a topic that was inspired by Tenet. So how we got here is last night, 
a friend of ours, um, a couple friend of ours invited us to um, movie night. And the movie that we chose was Tenet. Had you heard about Tenet? Not not uh, since he told me about it. Yeah. Okay. So Tenet is a new movie out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's starring John David Washington, mm-hmm. who actually happened to be the the star of the last episode the movie we did, which is uh, the movie Malcolm and Marie. He is also the son of Denzel Washington. So he this has is true. been... This is true. <laughs> and he's not John, and he's also not David. He's John David. He's John David. John, John David Washington. So he's been putting in work. He's been, mm-hmm. he's been doing it. Um, so when they um, told us about this movie... We didn't, I don't think any of us knew much of what it was about, so we decided to go along with it. It's a two and a half hour long movie. We started watching like around 9.30, 9.40. And about 10 minutes into it, I realized this probably wasn't a good idea. <laughs> it was be, still a little chilly, too. It was cold because we were outside. We were watching, you know, we're still being mm-hmm. respectful, um, or not respectful, we're still being, we're keeping. Um, um, Protocol, uh, protocol. COVID, COVID protocols, protocols are still at play. So um, we didn't go inside. We had our masks on. We sat outside. They had this huge screen, which, of course, I think we need to get a screen outside. We got a screen. We need. Um, we gave away our uh, projector. We need to buy another one. Okay. But do we have that screen? It's, I, we have a screen. We can see how it looks. <laughs> so we actually get a projector. That was a good screen. It was a professional <laughs> I think screen. it's the projector, actually, that uh, does it all. Oh, okay. Whatever it was, we were outside. It was, I mean, it looked like you were at the movie theaters. Beautiful. Um, So the movie was Tenet, John David Washington. And it is, um, who wrote and produced it? What's the name of the guy? Uh, Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan, who is the same guy who did The Matrix and Inception, you said. Let me make sure that it's Christopher Nolan because... um, it's one of the brothers. I know that. I don't know if it's Christopher or the Oh, they're brother. brothers? Yeah. Oh. Nolan. I don't know nothing about that. So, um, so for those who are aware of the brothers, as well as those who have seen yeah, it is Christopher. The Matrix, you know that it is along... Something just came in. You will, you'll know that it's along the lines of sort of just playing with, I guess, alternate reality. Or maybe even trying to explain the world that we live in so that we can take away certain things and be informed about how we want to reposition our mindset. So, in all... Can I just say one thing about Nolan? Like, I'm convinced he's, like, you know how Shakespeare just came up with all these different stories and things, and some people, like... Some people um, say that, you know, it wasn't really just one writer. Maybe he was just, like, being, like, he was able to, he was just getting um, attributed, all the writings were being attributed to him. I, I kind of feel like, how does a man, because all of these, so he's, he did all, did the Matrix, um, one, whole, two, three. Inception, a whole bunch of things. Like, you know, all these very interesting concepts about the Mind, world. Mind um, alt- altering movies yeah so, reality actually the matrix was the first time when i realized listen we're, we're in a matrix that yeah. actually had such an impact on me when i saw it that it changed the course of my understanding of life and the same has happened with tenet even though i don't really understand the movie <laughs> tenet so let's just be honest i'm gonna have to watch it two more times two or three more times i don't understand it but I think I understand where he's trying to convey. Um, and should we summarize what that is? I don't know, because we also may not want to do spoilers. All I want to say You're is... You're right. Like we're not going to talk... We're not going to say anything about what it's about. Of it is really interesting. And it, it if you open your mind up, like one of the... And you'll probably talk about this too more, but I want to just say, like, if you open your mind up, you start to realize how possible it is for all of the, quote, spiritual things... And I'm not talking about necessarily God or Yahweh or whomever it is, but like how all of the are you starting to believe in magic? Are we getting back to this again? I mean, never mind. Let's focus. Um, I'm still logical, but uh, for those who are wondering what that's about, that click on this link. <laughs> you know, people, <laughs> click on this link to reference why I just asked. Do you believe in magic? Go ahead. 
Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Newbie uh, is going to put the link there. Good luck. Uh huh. Trying to make that work. All right. So, yeah, I, I was just saying that, you know, it's, it's just like the possibilities that are out there um, in terms of what this universe as we understand it is the and world. what it could be is insane. So, needless to say, we're not going to do the move it tenant any justice because we couldn't. We don't understand it. We're going to have to go back and watch it to even understand what the mean is talking about. However, there were some things that it inspired in myself and possibly you. And it is the concept of shaping one's future, shaping the future. Is that, would you agree that that, even if that's not the bulk of the story, that was an aspect of it? How is the future shaped based on what's happening either currently or in the past? Uh, I'm going to go with sure. Okay. I'm going to go with sure. Good. Sure. Yes. Because this is what we talked about before. <laughs> That's what you <laughs> talked about while I sat there and was like, okay. So, so we talked about before we started. <laughs> so we actually did meet prior to and mm. we decided what we were going to talk about. So mm. I'm glad you said yes. Uh-huh. Um, that was us depositing into the future. So. Mm. Now, I think the reason why this is so appropriate for some days today is because we, in essence, are talking about creating a future that you want based on the actions that you are taking today, some days today. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot of times you're saying, I want to do something in the future. I would love for this to happen. You can do anything you want. Mm -hmm. You just need to start taking actions today. And if you can, then why not? So this movie, um, by and large, is a movie about how certain events in the future can be either programmed to happen in the future or the future can beckon one um, in the present state. So the future can beckon you while you're in the past to make certain decisions or do certain things so that the future can actually take place. That's the concept that I want to talk about. So, shall I explain that? Sure. Okay. Why not? All right. So, I think for the most part, as human oh beings... God. I'm trying to see whether or not it would be good to do some spoiler. No, so no. Because be it's not, this is not about the movie. This is not about the, we're not about to talk about the movie well, because we don't understand the movie. Well, I... We understand it enough. I don't understand the movie, to be honest. I don't. I, I can't. I can't even say that. When you said enough, I can't. I just know there were a cert, there were a couple of statements that were made in the movie that got me thinking. That's all I can say at this point. Um, I'm gonna have to watch the movie two, three more times to be able to say this is really what the movie is about. And to be honest, by the time I finally understand the movie, it may have nothing to do with the future beckoning one from the past. Let me just put that out there. But what I will say is there were a couple of statements that were made during the course of the movie that had me thinking like, huh. Wait, did you say the future is beckoning the past? The future is beckoning the past yeah. to, do, to take certain actions, to evolve or unfold in a certain way so that the future mm-hmm. can be guaranteed to happen right. in a certain way. Sure. Is that what the movie is about? Yeah. Oh, okay. Much. Who knew? <laughs> I, I, I didn't know that. So I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with myself for that. So um, part of, so, so let's just, let, let's talk about why I think it's important to talk about this topic. And it's a very complicated one in my mind. Mm-hmm. I may be wrong and hopefully you all can stick along with us. But when we talk about some days today, the point is, for the most part, we all have dreams. Who does not? We all have dreams. You know, I, want, I would like for one thing or the other to happen. We all have a vision of our lives that we would like to have unfold. Mm. Now, what I got from the movie or what the movie got me thinking about is any and everything we do is a way of us shifting the direction of the future in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um, so here's how I'm going to use this as an example. So while we were watching the movie last night, and I said when we started at 9.30, 9.40, a two and a half hour movie probably wasn't a good idea is because I was exhausted. <laughs> Beyond exhausted before we even got there. Now, I um, enjoy 
this couple friend of ours, we love them. Any opportunity to hang out with them, I always um, take them up on it. However, it was a long day. I don't even remember what I did. Oh, yeah, I know the kids had spring break. So we were we drove three hours away um, really late night on Wednesday after a really long week. I had a really long remainder of the week and then drove um, really early on Saturday morning to come back here and then had a bunch of stuff to do. And at 630, we started heading over there and we got there and started watching the movie at 930. So needless to say, it had been a long week. It was a long day. I was exhausted, probably. Um, and when the movie started, as good of a movie as it was, one of the things that I started thinking about as inspired by what was going on in the movie is the concept of the future. So I could not help but to start thinking, when will this movie end? <laughs> How can I possibly guarantee that this movie will end and I will somehow find myself in my bed because I am tired. So that was the future that I kept reminiscing about. That future was one that I was like, well, there's no way this movie can go on forever. It feels like it's going on forever, but surely at some point tonight, even though it feels like it's gonna drag on, because every second felt like an hour. For me, how did it feel like for you? The movie there was, was coming in there that I was really getting tired. Like, oh my god! Like, oh and man, not to say, like, and this is not a should good. We just tell them like we, right, we gonna we, go home. Like, <laughs> can we like well, let's let's finish that the other half. <laughs> I actually <laughs> was hoping somebody would say that. I actually think our couple friends were <laughs> thinking that too. Probably. And they kept checking it out. Like, Are y'all good? So good? They kept <laughs> like listen. We committed already. We gonna have to. <laughs> they we kept, gonna have to finish this. This song. right. We're here. <laughs> right. They kept asking, and then in my mind, I was like. What is a practical <laughs> way for us to end this movie halfway through and then say, well, come back? It's not reasonable. It's not a reasonable thing to stop a movie. We're already here. He halfway. set up that screen that you were talking about. It, it was like a whole bunch of things. It was like listen, it was a setup. It was an operation outside that they had set up. <laughs> Clearly, we just had to go with it. But in my mind, this is going to be the longest night ever. Now, this is not... Let me just say, we loved our time. I actually had a great time. Yeah, I was always. just tired. So let me just be clear to say, I was just tired. So yeah. in my mind, I started then reminiscing, not reminiscing, I started um, romanticizing mm. an eminent future. Mm. So I have three types of futures that I've broken up here. Mm. Yeah, you know, I did, I did my homework. I'm, I'm a little prepared. I'm a little prepared. Okay. Um, so while we were sitting there, I started romanticizing. I feel like I need to sit like this. Oh, your back hurts. No. Uh, I feel like I need to face you or something. See, yeah, that's why we feel I should have done it in the other place. Um, so I started romanticizing an eminent future. Is this future. weird? No, you good, you good. <laughs> I love people staring at me all up in my face uh, while I talk. <laughs> so I call this the eminent future because it's going to happen. It's not possible that I'm not going to find myself in my bed within a couple of hours from now. I was like, it's not possible that I'm not going to find myself in bed. It's kind of like, so an example of what's imminent in terms of, um, you know, futures. Because everything that's happening outside of this moment is a future. So the question is, how much control do we have over our future? The answer is full control. Your mind is gonna be blown. Your mind. I already told you. I think this is where you had lost me. When okay, that's fine. About this. That's fine. You know how people say, if you can think it, you can make it happen. The the future. Not, not um. You you are the master of your destiny. All these things, and we're like, but how can we? I don't know. Is it possible? Can I control? Listen, what I found out from watching this movie yesterday and the additional <laughs> introspection that took place afterwards is you got full control of your future. Point blank, period. Ain't nothing else to be said about this. Now, let me explain. Period. Period. <laughs> I mean, it's it, actually, that was a gift. What? I am so glad we went and had this whole experience because the, the awakening that came as a result of it was just mind-blowing. Um, so, anyways. So, yes. So, of course, I'm going to find myself in bed. Eminent future. It's going to happen. It's like the kids get up. When, they, when you go to school, you go to school, you go to your class, and at some point, you're going to go home. 
There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That is a future that is guaranteed unless something tragic happens to or, intervene. Or not necessarily tragic. There's a whole bunch of things that could happen. But for the most part, we're not going to talk about the, um, what are those things called? One-offs and everything because we're going to get to it possibly. But we're just talking about, for the most part, when you get up in the morning, there's an eminent future. When you get up, when, if I'm thinking about today's Sunday, tomorrow is Monday, I'm likely just going to go to work. There's no guesswork around that. There's no, oh, I wish there's a universe in which I could possibly go to work. It's going to happen. There's, there's not, you don't get up, do what you need to do, it's going to happen. So that's the eminent future. There's no guesswork about it, yes. We see it, we do it, we're immersed in it. It's inevitable. I mean, not inevitable. So yes, so that's that. So I was like, yes, I'm going to get up. I'm, I mean, at some point, this movie is going to end. I am going to find it myself in my bed, and it's going to happen, period. So I could take comfort in that. And then it occurred to me, it occurred to me that there are some things that happen in the future that you're not completely sure how it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen, but you just don't know how. So in addition to being here and watching this movie, I started thinking about my plans for today, Sunday. I had told my aunt that I was going to come see her. In addition to coming to go see her, there was just a bunch of things that needed to happen in my schedule today. But the one thing that I knew I had to get done was going to see my aunt. Now, I don't need to get into the reasons why this seemed like a future that I knew had how I knew it had to happen, but I didn't know how. Most of it had to do with I just had too many things planned for today. However, my aunt and all of them were prioritized, but I had already promised this woman I was going to come see her. So it also had to be a priority. And that being the case, I needed to figure out how I was going to do all the things that I needed. Because I wasn't just going to see her. I was going to take her some items. I was going to do some grocery shopping. I was going to cook. I was going to do some things. And today's Easter. Some things needed to get done so that I could go. Today is Easter. So that I could go see her. Um, So I'm sitting there while watching this movie that is about the future and your ability to control and sort of mold the future in your favor. I'm sitting here thinking, and I'm now spending my time in the future saying, I'm going to have to find myself at my auntie's house tomorrow, so I better start getting myself comfortable with that notion. So I started imagining myself in her house. How I was going to make it happen was very vague, unclear to me, but it was a future that I knew was inevitable. So an example of inevitable futures, as opposed to eminent future, is one. So for instance, when you are in grade school, you know you're going to go to college. That's an inevitable future. Like our kids, when they talk, they talk about, yeah, when we go to college. Is this your um, definition? It's mine. It's mine. You like it? (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to see. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to to understand. Because you said you researched. I'm trying to figure out. No, no, I didn't research. I did some brain dump. I did some brain okay, dump. Brain no, no, dump. Right, this so is my brain I'm dump. I'm thinking I'm not seeing the difference between eminent and inevitable, but that's fine. Let me, because I, I haven't explained it. Okay. Yeah, I haven't explained it. That's okay. why you don't see the difference. Ah. Yes. Yeah. Let me explain the difference. Mm-hmm. The difference between eminent is it's going to happen, and you don't have to question how. So, for instance, I'm in Terry's my my friend's house when this movie ends. I know for a fact we're going to go in the car, we're going to drive home, we're going to find ourselves in bed. Like, we know it's going to happen, we know when, and we also know how. There is no guesswork. This is sort of like autopilot. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not only autopilot, there actually is no chance, there's very little chance that it wouldn't happen as described. It's just going to happen. It's sort of when you're seeing your mom cooking, you know at some point, you're going to be sitting down having dinner. It's just, an, there's an inevitability to it. Mm. Of course, unless something random happens to sort of shake that future. But for the most part, it's going to happen. Mm. That's how th- these things work. So that's the eminent. The things that, 
You don't even have to think about it. You don't have to work towards, you don't have to think about the how. How, how, how. No, it happens. It's going to happen. So Just like, let me tell you what an imminent future is happening right now. When we're done with this conversation, we're going to end this podcast. <laughs> That's an inevitable. That's an imminent future. In an hour or two, you and I are not going to be sitting here having this conversation. Matter of fact, we can send a message to our future self. And that's and that not was, inevitable. Huh? And that's not inevitable? No, of course it is. But I'm just giving you a smaller, it's kind of like a bubble. We have an inevitability. And then we, I mean, we have an eminent future. And then okay, we have an inevitable time. future. And then we have the um, cultivated future, which I'll get to later. Okay. So the inevitable is one that... It's just going to happen. You, no questions about it. My mom is cooking. An hour from now, I'm going to be eating. You know, th- there's a direct relate. I don't have to figure out, what am I going to eat today? Could I possibly? No. It's done. It is answered. That's it. That's imminent. The inevitable is one in which there's a storyline. There's a storyline. And I gave you an example for the inevitable future, which is one of the, you know, all of us. You know, when we think about who we're going to be at 18, we know we're inevitably going to be in college. Not all of us, but for some, you know, most people who are bought into that future, which we can talk about the validity of that some other time. Who cares? Let's focus. But the fact is some kids get up. Let's use kindergarten. You know, it's inevitable that, you know, you're learning how to walk and then you go to kindergarten that's in it like you can see yourself you you know the reason i use college is because you know we have children who are college age who college i mean um you know school age children but you know when they talk they talk about you know when i'm in college it's an inevitable thing they don't have to sit here what am i going to be doing at 18 what could i what is the word no it's inevitable inevitable futures are futures that have been Sort of, they're on a trajectory of some sort. It's Mm -hmm. not like you're throwing a dart and it's just following a path towards a certain direction. It's sort of pre-planned. That's what what makes it inevitable. So what I'm getting is, eminent is, it's... It unfolds naturally. It's soon. It's like it's coming right now. It's like... But all of them, from my perspective, are kind of natural unfold, unfolding. Mm-hmm. And the reason why... No, they're not. But I, go ahead. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least in terms of how I see life. And I mm-hmm. don't know what, you know, what you're saying. In, you know, but whether it is that I'm taking myself from our friend's house to my bed, there are things that I've got to do that I can choose not to do. You're I'm jumping ahead of the situation. You're jumping ahead. In terms of the decisions, that, that falls after all this. Most of us spend our time in envisioning. We don't really think about the details, and that's where we're going to. So when I say you have full control, it's in those details. So forget, let, let's not judge. Can we focus? <laughs> focus? Okay, good. So, so basically, you're not going to let me talk. No, my bad. Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. So, um, so as I was saying... In both place times, you have to uh, you have to actually take steps to get there. One, on the other hand, is like I'm leaving right now. I am going to end up in my bed. This one, although uh, the inevitable, the inevitable one, going to college, is something that is um, you still have to make take steps to get there, but it's something that is already you know prescribed. Prescribed, yeah, prescribed for you. And so um, both of them, you know, it's something that you are working towards in one way or another. It's But but one of, one of them is more routine and the other one is less because I'm trying to make this more solid. You're trying to understand the difference. I think I'm okay with you viewing the eminent future as one that is maybe more soon. But that's not always the case. That's why I use my aunt as the inevitable one. Because to me, eminent is, I don't even have to, there's no brain power. It's sort of, this is on a, the eminent is. Eminent is auto, like you said, autopilot. It's, it's routine. It's, it's uh, routine. It just, it happens. It, you, I'm not, I have, whether or not I have too much thinking about, it just happens. Mm-hmm. 
our friends are going to say, okay, guys, it's time to go home. And then at that point, it's going to really be time to go home. Mm-hmm. Like that future, there's no guesswork to it. Mm-hmm. It just happens. Mm-hmm. It is going to happen. Now, of course, nothing just happens, right? In our mind, well, yeah, we're going to have to leave to go home. But you could leave to go somewhere else. Right. That's where the decision comes in. But for the most part, we just have it as a given that we're going to leave and we're going to go home. It's the same as I was saying, this podcast, it's ending. The fact that it's going to end is imminent. Mm. We could just let it run forever. We could theoretically sit here and talk forever. But Mm. for the most part, this thing, this conversation is going to end in about an hour or two. Mm. It's imminent. And then when it ends, there's another meeting that we're going to have. And then we're going to go to sleep. That's just, there ain't no guesswork there. There's no brain power for how could it, could it, or whatever. The inevitable, which is the second bubble of the different type of future, is one that is, you're on a trajectory towards, but it requires certain interventions okay. to really guarantee it. Sure. So it's sort of like, okay, I'm going to be in college one day. Well, which college? Mm-hmm. Right? I'm going to be... In college one day, well, how will I actually make that happen? The closer you get there, the more you then need to sort of start creating that narrative. But you've always known as a child you go into college. Mm-hmm. Like it was never really guesswork. You've always known that you were going to, like for some people, they've always known, I'm going to get a job in corporate America. I don't know what else to say. I just know that. That's my inevitable future. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So to me... The inevitable future is one in which, of course, it's you're not. It's not routine. There's not. There's no. There's no. Ain't no get. There, there's work that needs to be done to guarantee it. But you almost are so sure it's going to happen. It doesn't even plague your mind as to whether or not it's going to happen. Now it's a matter of, well, how do I make it happen? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like it's almost guaranteed. There's no brain power. You, you're not doubting the the likelihood of you going to college at least i didn't i just figured oh, yeah i don't know which college i'm gonna go to because i just assume when i'm 18 my future self will be in some college mm-hmm. and then you know so so that's the inevitable future mm-hmm. and some families it's you're gonna go and start running this farm yes in some family i'm gonna be on the street like i was yeah. saying like when i turn 10 i'm gonna be on the street kind of just handing out mm-hmm. you know trying to some hustle families by 13 you know i'm a I'm gonna be married. I'm gonna I'm I'm hit my fr- uh, married. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm gonna hit my first stint at mm, jail. Correctional facility. <laughs> um, There's some inevitable. <clears throat> and, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. And you, you have no idea how it's gonna happen. But you just, a lot of people will say, I've always thought by the time I was 20, most of my friends would be dead or be in jail. Okay. Inevitable future. Okay. Right? Okay. And then the yeah. last yeah. type of future, that's the one that plagues us all. Is it? it is. Wow. It is the. Oh it is God. where we struggle. That is the cultivated future. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Please. You're welcome. You're welcome. Do tell. Do tell. <laughs> yes. Cultivated. Wow. The cultivated future yeah. is one in which it's not imminent. Mm-hmm. It's not something that just naturally unfolds. It's not one in which you have a trajectory towards necessarily Mm. it's one in which you create for yourself based on what you want Mm. that is the one that you bring your creative mindset your interests your um the things that drive you that is the one that you make happen Mm. you make that happen do you understand the difference between eminent, inevitable, cultivated? Yeah. Okay. Cultivated is an example of the future you had with Semester at Sea, mm. right? You went to college, which was your inevitable future. Actually, let me, let me kind of play this game. You woke up, and your eminent um, future was, I'm going to drive to Pittsburgh to go to school. Okay, so because you, um, whatever it is, you woke up and got into a car. Maybe that's <laughs> because you're going to go somewhere. Your inevitable future was I'm going to find myself at a college that I decided I was going to go. And then 
someone while at college started talking about Semester at Sea. Well, there's this program that we also have, and you can go to 25 countries in one semester, and you said, hold up, <laughs> that sounds like me right here. This is the, that's the future I'm trying to bring about. You've never thought about this future. There's nothing inevitable about it. You're not on a path to make this happen. Your college credits have nothing to do with you going to semester at sea. There's no path set out to do it. If you did not interject in any way, this cultivated future is not going to happen. The cultivated future are the things of our dreams. That is the future in which we make magic happen. The things that we want to happen to us in our lives, that type of future, that lies in the realm of cultivation. Do you understand what I'm saying? You understand the difference? Yes. Okay. Yes, teacher. You're welcome. <laughs> My pen dropped. Teacher. <laughs> so, now that we've got eminent, inevitable, cultivated, most people will say, well, yeah, of course, it makes sense that eminent is... You know, it just all it just unfolds. You know, you don't need to do much. You also don't really need to do much for your inevitable. You just know I'm gonna make a decision here and there, but it's going to happen. But it's the cultivated where you're like, I don't know if it's gonna happen. I mean, that is left to chance. It may not happen most of the time. It doesn't happen. But what I am here to say is your cultivated future is just as guaranteed as your eminent future. It is just as guaranteed as your cultivated future. The problem is we seek the cultivated future because we haven't created a path or we haven't been offered a path or it hasn't been done repeatedly that your brain has created a pathway for how to get there. We then see cultivated dreams as mystical. It's one of those that I don't, I don't, I don't know how it could happen. It's so weird. I mean, how could I fall from where yes. I am right now to being something else? Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, there's nothing guaranteed about your imminent future, except for the fact that you've just created a process for how to get it done. When I leave, I don't need to decide. When I leave a guest somewhere house that I'm visiting, I don't need to decide, well, where should I go today? Should I go to a hotel? Should I go to my mom's house? Should I go to another friend's house? I don't know, maybe I should go to school. I do feel like studying. No, you're going home. That's it. <laughs> Ain't no guesswork there. You leave your a friend's house at nine, no, we left at midnight. It was, it was 12.30. When you leave your friend's house at 12.30, you go to bed. <laughs> Ain't no decision that needs to be made. I'm going to bed. It is guaranteed. You're right. Lifestyle. But that's what I'm saying. So you said it depends on the lifestyle, and that's the point. There's nothing guaranteed in life. These are all decisions we're making. We're thinking we're on autopilot. But no, we've just taken the process of making decisions out of it and have decided, well, we know what the decision is. We are home. And you, therefore, go home. So when it comes to your imminent future, there's no concern about your ability. I'm not sitting at my friend's house wondering, will I make it to bed? Is there a possibility? No, you're going to make it to bed because it's happened time after time after time. It's a guaranteed future that's going to happen. All you got to do is get in your car and go. But the fact of the matter is we think it's guaranteed, but it doesn't always have to because I just said there are a whole host of other possibilities that could happen, but even external forces could make it so it doesn't happen that way. You can get into an accident. You can get lost. Your car could not start, and all of a sudden you thought you were going to be sleeping, and there's another reality. You're not sleeping. You couldn't find your car. Your car got towed, and now you find yourself at the whatever, the what it, the pound. Yeah. That So your eminent future has now shifted into something else happening. Mm -hmm. So, But the point is, eminent for the most part, you don't have to think about it's autopilot. It's just going to work out. Now, let's think about your inevitable future, which is something that's still happening in the future. But for the most part, we don't have much trepidation around it because these are things that 
have either be, been offered to us as a guaranteed future. They've been beat, beaten into our heads that you just accepted it. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to college. I'm not, it, it, no, I, I don't have to wrap my mind around that. You don't have to ask yourself, am I someone who goes to college? Well, in some families, actually going to college is a big deal, right? Like some people will say, I am the first, like this is such an accomplishment because we can envision ourselves going to college. There was no one in our family who has ever been to college but this person right here. And when they say it, you, that it was an inevitability that you're going to go to college, are looking at them like, oh, not a big deal. Not a big deal. <laughs> Just like someone who is saying, I didn't think I would live past the age of 12. And I'm here at 17. Well, goddamn, I need to pat myself on the back. And you're thinking to yourself, mm, not a big deal, you know, because... The inevitable futures that we have based on either what's been beaten into us and what we've um, accepted as really just what's going to happen next, it's been offered to us, so we don't have to question it. It's there. I don't have to question, will this happen? I've seen it happen in so many other places and spaces, so I know it can happen. I don't have to put too much brain power. There's some decisions I need to make along the way to sort of course correct and guarantee it, but it's gonna happen. The cultivated future is the one where ain't no script. We don't know too many people around us who's done it, or if they've done it, we don't believe we could do it, mm. or we don't even, and, and even if we did believe we could do it, we have no idea how to get it done. Mm. It's just, I, I don't know, it's guesswork. It's guesswork. So the cultivated future are the things dreams are made of. Because that's the, that's the space you get to dream about what a future could look like. You understand what I'm saying? You have no idea if it can actually come to pass. But you're dreaming. One day it would be nice. However, because someday is today, there are things you can do to guarantee your cultivated future. Yeah. I'm going to talk about it. I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> so, now that so we understand the difference between the three. <laughs> right? Eminent, inevitable, cultivated. Sure. And we understand we got the two handled okay. Mm -hmm. We need help with the cultivated future. Awesome. Cool. You going to help us out. Now, <clears throat> let me do a, a bit of an illustration here. Yeah. Okay. There's an eminent Inevitable, cultivated, EIC. Now, if I'm gonna write a book about this, I'm gonna write a book about this. This is the continuum. Eminent, eminent, um, inevitable, cultivated. Now, look at this. I don't know if y'all can see this. No, they can't see it. Okay, it's cool. You don't need to see it. <laughs> that wasn't part of your future. That wasn't eminent <laughs> for you to see it. However, the goal is when we have dreams that are in the cultivated space it's sort of like when you talk about physics and people talk about being dropped in a rabbit hole or what do they call those things the black hole you're moving from one time in reality and you're envisioning yourself in another reality which is your cultivated future but you have no idea how to get there so it seems magical that you're going to get there an example of that is I'm sitting at my friend's house and I'm like, I'm going to have to go to my aunt's house tomorrow. Forget my, let me not use my aunt as an example. Since you did that already. Since I did that already. <laughs> I'm going to Aruba tomorrow. Let me just let it be said. I'm traveling tomorrow. I'm sitting at my friend's house and I'm You're thinking, listen, I'm trying to do it. Some days today. So I'm sitting at my friend's house and I'm thinking, Sunday is going to be jam packed with activities. And on Monday is when I get on a flight to go to Aruba, and I'm going to go to Aruba, and I'm going to be in a completely different space and time. And while I was sitting there watching this movie that seemed like it was never going to end, that reality seemed out of reach for me. The reality two days from now, being in Aruba, seemed out of reach. Not that, yeah, in that moment okay. for me. Not because I didn't know the mechanics of how I was going to get there. My mind just couldn't wrap itself around the possibility that I'm here right now. And somehow I'm going to find myself in a completely different time and space in Aruba. Mm. 
so it seemed like it was going to be some sort of magical occurrence that's going to happen between now and then to get there, even though I was spending myself in the future. It's the same way right now. Like, what is a future? What is a future goal? What is an, a cultivated future that you have for yourself right now? Let's just use let's just use the, you as an example. You, yeah, something that is not inevitable. You're not going to work tomorrow. Something that is not um, something that is not eminent, meaning you're going to work. Something that's not inevitable. You're going to be at your son's high school graduation. What is a cultivated future that you have for yourself? And be specific. Mm-mm. How much does that mean in your bank account? Mm. How much does that mean in your bank account? Bank account. Uh, or whatever freedom means to you. 100 million. Okay. 100 mean million in your bank account. Not at least 100 million um, net worth. Sure. Worth. Listen. You want to open up a bank account. You want to open up at some point in the future. It has to be, you know, they say you ha- it has to be clear. Just like I'm going to Aruba, when I get to the future tomorrow, and I'm going to send myself a message in the future. Whichever, babe. Savings. 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 How much is in your savings that will represent financial freedom? Just like tomorrow, you know when I I will know I would have arrived at in the future. Five hundred thousand. I don't know. Let's just say a million. A million dollars in your, in your um. Checking account. A million dollars in your checking account. Period. Future. Your future self wants to see a million dollars in your checking account. Similar to how my future self tomorrow is going to see myself in Aruba. That's a similar concept. Right? Now, my Aruba is has moved from cultivated to inevitable. But let me tell you when it was cultivated. Right, similar to what you're doing right now. Let me tell you when it was cultivated. My sister-in-law called me, I think it was in December, I don't know. Hey, girl, we're going to Aruba. Uh, I don't, what? What are we talking about? Oh, I need to call this me. Aruba, what, what are we talking about? I can't go to Aruba. Um, so, and she was like, oh no, we're gonna go to Aruba. Um, are you in or out? That's a, 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 a future that I haven't thought about, right? Now it's just planted into my future. So yeah, now I've got to cultivate it. Your sister-in-law, your sister-in-law, mm-hmm. is she going to? Yeah. To Aruba? Yeah. Yeah. Your sister-in-law? Yeah. From, in Connecticut. So, um, so that was planted into <sighs> my mind. Can I just finish? So that was planted, right? And it's the same way as you're sitting here with a hundred million. That was a cultivated future. It was some random idea, some random wish, some random goal that you don't have any sense for how it will happen. So right away, you buy into this future. I said, you know what, fine. Just like right now, you're gonna say, yes, I'm going to commit to getting a million dollars in my bank account. Mm -hmm. I've committed myself to that. So how it now starts to move from the space of cultivated, you know, which is this weird space, down to inevitable is you gotta start taking steps. So she was like, okay, you know what? Let me go ahead and book the ticket. Okay, she booked the ticket, so it still really didn't feel real to me. She booked the ticket. Okay, um, we're thinking about these hotels. What are you thinking? So I'm checking out hotels. I'm like, okay, okay, well, maybe we do this one. Ooh, what do you mean? Weird yeah, she was saying, you know, let's do this hotel. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe this one. Okay, let's do this hotel. It started to feel even more real. And then she sent me something. Don't forget to go get your um, COVID test. So I got myself into a little car, into my car, drove to the COVID testing thing. They stuck a thing up at my nose. And I was like, yeah, no, it's because I'm going to Aruba. Felt very real to me. Came back, um, got that. And then my results came back negative. I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm clear to go. So it came back negative. And then the next thing that happened is she sent me a link about here are some of the things you want to make sure you do because there's some protocols that you need to put in place like getting insurance and making sure you upload your test results and all these things before you can show up to Aruba. So I do all these you things. insurance for Aruba to go to Aruba? Listen, it is what it is. So I do all these things, and now it's starting to feel real. And now I start thinking about the different outfits I'm hat i'm going to be 
um, wearing. And I pull up my tickets and I got my um, and I got my my passport. So now it's completely moved from the realm of cultivated, conceptual to oh, it's happening. Tomorrow I am going to get on a plane, and it's going to be imminent that I'm going to be flying to Aruba. Conceptual, meaning cultivated, dragged into inevitability, dragged into eminent. That's actually how you beckon the future forward. That's the process. It has to start in the space of concept for the most part. Once you accept it, you then start to put in the work, the contours, to make it inevitable. Because now you start to see it. And then as you start to see, you start to do the work to pull it even closer so that it becomes eminent. And then when it becomes eminent, you simply step into the future. Does that make sense? So... When I conceptualize going to see my aunt, it happened in my mind. Oh, I should go see her. She was sick. Mm -hmm. I should go see her. I spoke with her. Yeah, I'm going to come see you. Oh, okay. It was still conceptual. It was still cultivated. It was still, is it cultivated or curated? Maybe I'm going to start using curated future. Whatever it is, <laughs> it was still somewhere in the realm of the possibility. And then yesterday, I'm sitting here like, well, how am I going to get to my aunt's house? I haven't thought about this. So now I need to start putting the contours. I could see a sketch of me in my aunt's house, just like my kids can see a sketch of them in college. They have no idea how it's going to happen. They can envision something. I can, mm, yes, I can see it. I don't know. And then the more you take actions towards it, the clearer that picture becomes. Because now you're creating the pathways for how to get there. Or oh, if I'm going to go to college, I should probably start studying for my PSATs. I should probably start reaching out to some professors or some people who can write me some recommendations. I should probably start making sure that my grades are good. Maybe see what these people want, this particular college that I want. Maybe see what exactly they require to get in. Oh, you want me to write five essays? What are those five essays about? Okay. Well, let me make sure I can meet all these five essays. Do I have enough time to write the five essays? Okay, well, at this point, I might as well put in an application. It goes from the realm of possibility. It goes from the realm of it would be nice one day to the realm of it's inevitable I'm going to do this to the realm of, oh, no, I'm definitely going to do this. It's just one step. There's no question about it. So the point is, we all got dreams. <laughs> we all got dreams. After all this, point, I believe we all got that children are the future. We we all got dreams. All right, so we all got dreams. But the point is, a lot of times, the dreams that are in the cultivated and curated space, which is your dream, is I want to see a million dollars in my checking account. It seems magical. Of course, it seems magical because you haven't created the pathways for how to get there. You haven't beckoned the future forward. You haven't pulled the future to yourself and yourself towards the future so that there can be those censure moments. Do you understand what I'm saying? Those censure moments in which you're tracking towards the future. Pinsir. The fu Is that what it's called? Pincer. <laughs> Pincer. Oh, that's a reference to the that's movie. A reference that to the movie. Be, uh, Y'all will get it when you watch it. But the point is, the future, so the point, the reason why I decided this will be a good topic is because there's a part in the movie when they said, we communicate with the future all the time. That's such a deep concept. And when they explained it, they said, for an example, you could send yourself a text. When you send yourself a text, that's you communicating with the future. Every time you write. Every time you write something. Every time you take a picture. Matter of fact, that's one of the things they say is that you should actually write. When you were just talking about, um, you were just talking about like being more specific. One of the things they say is actually to write it down. Yes. And people who actually write 
um, their goals now and are more likely to succeed. To so succeed. Because you're crystallizing it in your mind. And the minute it's crystallized in your mind, your brain goes to work to try to make it inevitable. It goes from the realm of possibility and now you've given your brain a problem to solve. So now it's looking for, there's a shaded, it's like, okay, well, I know we're, we're working towards this. It's kind of like, I'm gonna go to college. Your brain is like, okay, well, I know we're working towards that, so we might as well start gearing ourselves towards it. So when you write it down, yes, it pulls it from the space of um, sort of magic possibility. It starts to pull it down. Anyway, so the point is we all have dreams, and in order for us to accomplish those, no dreams are too big, I'm convinced. Because, like I said, if you can communicate with the future, if you can communicate with the future by writing to the future or taking pictures so that when you're in your future sub, you can look back. Because for people who have diaries, I used to write, you know, as a high school, I used to um, have diaries. I can go back to my past self and actually witness my past self. When you have pictures or you have videos that you've captured there yourself, or if we look on Instagram, we can go back to various moments in the past and say, oh, yeah, I remember this. Oh, I remember thinking I was going to start doing some days today, and look at me now. I'm doing it. You've written certain things to yourself from the past, and in the future, you're communicating yourself with yourself from the past. The question is, can the future beckon you to do certain things while in the present moment to guarantee the future. And that equation is really what allows for you to sort of keep that link between the past and the future. You're communicating to the future by saying, okay, here's what I want. You're writing things down. And the future is beckoning you, is communicating you, with you in the past by you envisioning the future by you, um, you know, sort of just occupying more space and really building out the tenants. So when I said, I know at some point I'm going to see myself at my auntie's house, that's me in the future. I'm envisioning myself in the future, right? And in order to do that, now I got to think, okay, well, if I'm going to go to my auntie's house, how would that happen? So I got to get up at a certain time. I got to go to the grocery store between that and then time. I got to come back here. I got to make some food and then I'm going to get into my car because I need to be able to go between this time. Now the future is saying, listen, we're going to end up at our auntie's house. You're here right now. In order for us to make sure this future is guaranteed, I need you to pre-plan the activities that need to take place so that you can then eminently step into that future. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's essentially, as you place yourself in the future and you're working backwards, you're like, okay, well, if I'm going to go to my auntie's house at this point, or if I'm going to have a million dollars in my account at this point, okay, well, I need to make sure I'm able to really generate $100,000 every month or I need to make sure I get on a deal that I can guarantee a million dollars in re in um, return if that's the case then what do I need to do okay I need to surround myself with billion dollar folks if I'm trying to get a million dollars go see if I can surround myself with billion dollar folks if I'm going to do that where am I going to find them I don't know maybe I go to Austin go to LA and spend time in certain spaces here and then when I do that, I need to be able to offer them something. So what am I going to offer? Hey, guys, let me be your attorney. Whatever it is, you start to build out the content because the future self is saying, at some point, you're going to be sitting down at a computer and I need to see a million dollars in my checking account. In order to do that, I now need to build out the steps that makes sure that I can get there. So it's now more of a inevitability future, inevitable future. And then from inevitable, I continue to build out the contours and now becomes eminent. That's how you guarantee whatever future you want. You've got to figure out how to communicate with your future self. Your future self has got to beckon you towards that um, future. Before I close out, do you have any questions? No. Any thoughts? Maybe. Do you, okay, well, what are your thoughts? Uh, it's 105. And well, do you agree or disagree? Um, I, I don't think it's as simple as agree or disagree. Mm. So, Perspective? 
perspective. Um, I will say this, that one of the key takeaways, if I may call it that, is, you know, there's plenty of things there that I think, you know, is being crystallized, like the concept of eminent, um, inevitable. I like all of those eminent, you know, those are things that you've essentially, from my, the way that I read it is, these are things that, um, you know, generally you have created a process, a routine um, that you do every day. You get up, you brush your teeth, you, you know, eat breakfast if you do that. Various different people do different things. They might get up and jump into their car and go do, um, you know, whatever their labor is or whatever the case may be. So that's imminent. And then inevitable are the things that you have already just convinced yourself by like you say it's prescribed it's like um a lot of it is based on your you know micro um society you know whatever your culture is your norms those are things that you have already you know been convinced that this is something that's going to happen um even though for some people it may appear to be difficult or are far-fetched for these people living in that space they were none of it is actually guaranteed but you know it's the same thing as if you see yourself in a certain way like you've already told yourself this is the role that i play and now you're acting out that role towards its inevitable inevitability end. Mm-hmm. um and so um you know like people then see that as you know this is natural whereas it's like no you're making a decision on all of these it's just all like decisions you haven't made your decision you know just like you could have decided you know what it's my norm is I'm going to be a billionaire, like all the other things that you could potentially be. But it's difficult for people who haven't been put into that space to see that that's also a possibility. And then it's the cultivated, which is more difficult, like you said, precisely because, you know, there isn't necessarily a routine in a process or a, you know, prescribed that this is where you're going to go. But it's just as feasible if you put one foot in front of the other. And that's the thing, like um, one of the the things that I've said along that same line is the idea of, you know, working out and getting in shape or getting, because that's something that I know that I, I, I do and it's consistent. I wake up, I take myself to the gym and eventually, and I also eat right, which is very important, quote unquote eat right, but you know, you be eating it's very right. important. Um, yeah um but anyways with respect to that like eventually you start to see results but you know all of these things they have more routine to them they have more like a lot other people will tell you precisely what are the things are that you can do you can go and do research and, and the truth is that there's a lot of that same thing in the cultivated as well you can go to coaches you can go like but the thing is like a lot of people because they're, it's so varied, or well, the, the factors, like the factors are much more than, you know, just working out, but it's also like the ways to get to quote unquote 100 million is also so very, so varied that it makes it difficult for somebody to just say, okay, well, I'm just going to keep on putting one foot in front of the other, and this is where I'm going to go. But I think it's, but like what your point is, which I completely agree with, is equally inevitable, or e- yeah. I'll say it, inevitable because cultivated is what you are saying. It's equally in- inevitable if you see it that way, if you mm-hmm. put it into that subscribed or prescribed um, uh, bucket bucket as well. Mm-hmm. So um, not only is it know, equally inevitable, but it's also, oh, my bad. My I thought you were done. My bad. About. Um, so, um, so, so what I was saying is, um what I was saying is is that uh it's equal because there was it's equal the thing is what you want to do as a person who is cultivating a reality is a believe that is equally inevitable so that you keep on going but what you want to do and I think this is the point that I um liked about or the way that you put it it's like you go from cultivated to inevitable to imminent so cultivated is like all right well this is what i want and then 
once you get into the mindset of, oh, this is natural for me, that's when it becomes inevitable. And when it becomes imminent is when you have now learned enough that it becomes routine. You learned enough about this space that now the things that you're doing is like, okay, well, today I wake up, I go and do this, then I go and do that. And all those things you find out when you refine, you learn, you start to put processes in place. One of the things that we do as business consultants is to tell people to put processes in place because you don't want to always reinvent the wheel. So it's the same thing with everybody. Thinking takes a lot. This is why CEOs, managers, all the people who are doing strategy get paid as much as they do is because thinking takes a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And so the more you can put something into a system, processes, the easier it gets. And that's, you know, making your future imminent when you've done that. And so I think it's the routine. You're absolutely right. I think it's the routine. But I think it's also breaking down the inevitable future into eminent steps. And that's the main thing. Well, not even so much processes, because process to me is more system. Like it's a, you know, I do the same thing over and over. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to use an example. How I get from my friend's house to my house is I get in my car. It's doable. Check that my car has gas, doable. I plug in my GPS if I need to, manageable. Mm. I press start and pump on the pedal and I follow direction. It's, it's not very complicated. That's not, that's a process. Okay, well, if you say like process, what, then what, that's what, fine. There's, there's a process that is, that is understood. Right, right, right. And verbalized. And a process for how to get there. How to. No, there's, both are the same as far as I'm concerned. There's one that verbalize and there's one that you actually just do. It's the same. Like if I, like this is the thing. People who, a lot of times we talk about people who just do things like, you know, maybe they, they it, it's intuitive to them. And so they just go about doing it and they have no idea how to tell somebody who doesn't find it to be intuitive. And so now they're trying to figure out, okay, here are some of the things. Like frameworks are based off somebody who's like, mm-hmm. okay, well, this is the thing that I do. Mm-hmm. It's just not verbalized yet, but yeah. it's a process. No, I yeah. agree. So I agree. But I guess what I'm trying to say is whatever it is that you're trying to do in the inevitable space, it gets done by taking manageable mm-hmm. actions. I need to study for my SATs. In order to study, if I, I'm going to need to either get a coach or a tutor, or I need to get up every day and do a practice exam. All of these things are working towards your inevitable college future, but you are taking actions every day. It's the same thing. I need to make sure I have, I show a billion, a million dollars in my bank account. What are the steps that I need to figure out how to get there? The issue is people don't think about, you don't look to pull that future closer to you by moving it from the space of conceptual cultivated into inevitability oh no i'm this is what i'm working to when i get up i'm in search for a million dollars this is what, <laughs> that's the isn't that the goal i got up today what am i doing i'm going to my auntie's house anything that does not support that if my kids are like hey but mommy can you do my hair i'm sorry does that have anything to do with me in my inevitable future in my auntie's house it doesn't nope not doing it what i said i needed to do is i'm gonna get up go to the grocery stores to go buy the groceries bring them home cook some food get myself in the car drive towards my auntie's house that's how the inevitable future happens anything else is a distraction but it becomes inevitable when you are focused on that goal because in being focused, you then create eminent steps and actions for how to get there. Mm-hmm. So that's say, the point. And I, and I want to say on the eminent steps and actions, sometimes you don't know what these are. And, you know, sometimes people will tell you, like, one of the things that we do is we get our asses up at five in the morning. Um, you know, we take cold showers. And it's not because... These steps, there are a lot of people who probably don't do that and are have gotten the same goals, 100 million. But these things, is, this is very important to understand from my perspective. And this is the other thing is that, um, you know, another thing that they talked about is cause and effect in the movie. But one of the things that they that people believe is that inspiration comes before action. I'm inspired. 
then I take action. When in fact, I believe it's complete opposite. Um, and so a lot of times when you don't know what to do, you take on some sort of routine and then you keep on working that routine day in and day out. And then eventually you start to see things come in and you can get the inspiration. And the reason why I want to say why I think it's um, action before inspiration, a lot of people don't really see, they don't attribute the action that took place when the inspiration happened because they're not necessarily, they have, they're not cultivating the action. You know, for example, you drove somewhere, you saw something, and that thing gave you inspiration. You're not saying it's because I drove somewhere, because you were going to drive there anyway, so you didn't cultivate that action. But if you never drove there, you wouldn't have seen that thing. Or a whole bunch of different things that are happening that, you know, you've, you know, you're, um, you're grabbing pieces from this thing that happened in your life and that thing that happened in your life, and then you put the two together, and all of a sudden, oh, wow, this is a brilliant idea. And nobody's going to say, well, it's all these things that happened mm-hmm. that caused that, and to me for me to have the idea all they're thinking is oh my god idea inspiration now i'm moving forward when in fact it is all these things that came before that culminated in that inspiration and so the point is sometimes you may not have what the hell it is that you need to do you need to take the actions you somebody tells you this is what you do you go and do it and eventually things start coming in you get the inspiration and you take off and i think that's very important um you know, I think that's very important because, you know, um, that causes also when you have that cultivation that causes it and you believe in it, you start to take some steps to, in order to, for it to become um, inevitable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I, th- I do think it's important to stress that I don't believe the future is as much of a guesswork as we think it is. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's the where, point I'm making. Yeah, that's where you were... That's where you, yeah, I think you um, should emphasize it a little more because I think that's the point that you're making. And I I do agree mm-hmm. so long as, I do agree for a large part of it. I do agree for a large part of it. Um, I think we, when we were talking, there were some parts of what you were saying that I was like, uh, I don't know. I think for a large part of it, there are some things that obviously could happen that derails you. But for the most part, I think it's definitely within our control. Right. The example that I spoke about when I was, you know, when we were talking earlier was, once again, back to my friend's house, I'm thinking of the future, which was today, but at that time, it was yesterday. And I'm like, at some point, I know I'm going to see myself at my auntie's house. The house is not going to fall on me. And all of a sudden, I'm here. But I think a lot of us think that future happens upon us. All of a sudden, somehow, I don't know, a million dollars is going to appear in my bank account. I have no idea what sort of role I'm going to play in that. What sort I mean, of... I'm hoping for some unknown rich family member. Yeah, but away. you can... But, but I think hope <laughs> is wishing things happen to you. But I actually think it's much more straightforward than that. How am I going to ha- find myself... To this whole all of a sudden, a million dollars falls on my lap. That could also happen. No, it could. It could. All of a sudden, somebody could come pick me up in my house and take me to my auntie's house. There's a whole bunch of stuff that could happen. But what I'm saying is you can actually guarantee certain futures. You can guarantee the future more readily than we think we can. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times we think... I. I, I, I don't know. I just want to influence the future. That's actually what people say. I want to do a little bit to influence. You no, know, you, you, you create the future. I'm going to Aruba tomorrow because I decided that's what I was going to do. I graduated from college because I decided that's what I was going to do. We just don't realize that's what's going on. We're thinking, well, you know, yeah, I'm going to, you know, get an A in this course. I'm going to. No, you are deciding on guaranteeing a certain future. Mm -hmm. So the point is, when you're in the space of cultivating a vision that you want for yourself, yeah, you can cultivate that vision, but you can almost also guarantee that vision in being actualized 
Because what happens when you cultivate is you now do certain things to move it into the space of inevitability. And once it's in the space of inevitability, we already know we can get, we can do it. If a kindergarten knows at some point I'm going to be graduating from college, then certainly you should know at some point there's going to be a million dollars in my bank account. Those are both things that you opt into. It's just a decision. The difference is the kindergartner does not have to guess, well, can it really happen? Depending on how they've been reared, because there are some people who actually have no idea if they are going to finish high school. I have no idea. I, 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 it seems like a dream to finish high school. There's some people who that is their dream. I, I mean, I just, I can't, I can't even wrap my mind around it, I wish. But then there's some people who are like, well, once I clear high school and college, and I clear my first million out of the way, I'm really going to be trying to figure out how to make my billion. That's where their cultivated future lies. So if that is the case, then all things are possible. If it's as much of a dream for someone to go to graduate high school, the same type of inevitable cultivated dream as it is for someone to have a million dollars, but you can say, no, well, I mean, high school is a piece of cake. What are we talking about? All right, so, so is a million dollars a piece of cake. Yeah, so I, I, I have a lot of questions on this, but um, we're at 122. Oh, yeah, we got to go. We could do a part two. I'm ready for it. So for part two, I wanna, I, I'd like you to discuss for part two. Yes. So you have time to think about this so you don't have to answer it right now because we got to cut this short. Um, I'd like you to discuss how racism plays in to this since and whether or not there it, racism is an hindrance at wow, all that's good considering um the fact that all of this is within our realms and maybe republicans are right all along that's good i love it yes we can talk about the true you know how the real or perceived constraints mm -hmm. of the real world how they impact our future mm -hmm. i love that so. yes I listen once again. The future is guaranteed. As long, just it's just as guaranteed. As, and I did I go to my auntie's house today or not? Yeah. I did. Yesterday it seemed like a dream when I was sitting there at my friend's house at nine thirty, saying I don't see how this is gonna happen. It seemed like a dream. Matter of fact, I should have written myself. Actually, in that moment, I thought I should write a note to yourself. Um, <laughs> but anyways. It happened, I guaranteed it, and I made it happen. And just like that, you make anything else happen. But we're going to do a part two. I'm actually excited about that. Because the question is, what about the constraints? And how can you guarantee that it actually happens? Racism, we're also talking about. Um, all sorts of things, we, all of it. You know, somebody from. All of it. Uzbekistan. Who Listen. Living in, um, right all of it. Borat. All of it. Going all of it oh. and and i'm going to and i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna do a cliffhanger my answer lies in the question what would sonic the hedgehog do think about it he would collect coins think about it until he, he hit a spike okay mm -hmm. see Ding. think about it see think Nobody about it it's good it's good think about it okay there we go so Thanks so much for joining us as we made our return back to Some Day Is Today. And I think this was a triumphant return. Yes. Even, indeed. Yes. Even if I do say so myself, this was a triumphant return. And you guys, listen, wait for part two because... I, I feel like, I, number one, I have to congratulate you for listening to this because now you know how to guarantee whatever future you've decided. Well, not how. Now you know that you can guarantee whatever future you've decided. Now it's a matter of how. And also, I don't know, maybe you want to check out Tenet. I'm tired. I'm tired too. Anyways, <laughs> thank you for watching Some Days Today and listening to Some Days Today uh, where we encourage you to do epic, dope as shit yeah every day every single day i mean 
I guess this is our epic dope ass shit for today. Which one? I also went um like Good job. I went to my auntie's house. I went to my auntie's house. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what I'm registering Because I didn't think it was going to happen Thank the Lord, I showed up and showed out Alright um, Y'all have a good day We'll see you next week And you know what, that future is going to be guaranteed right. Well, you know what, I don't know if I'm going to be there <laughs> Well, we may do it from a re- You know what, don't worry about it Okay, alright Have a good day